One of the reasons why I wrote Metabolic Cardiology back in 2005 was really about cases like Joan. I mean, Joan is a living and breathing example of metabolic cardiology. I was a young doctor back then. I was only like 33 years old. And uh, I came to the emergency room and I saw this young woman in her probably in her mid or late 30s and only a few years older than me and she was in heart failure. Here I had a two week old baby, a 12 year old son, an 18 year old son at home, a family that needed me. I was a working mother. I was in good health. I didn't know what happened. And I wanted to know what happened. I didn't want to stay here. But my husband convinced me to stay in the hospital. And the next day I met my physician, my cardiologist. And from day one, we connected because I told him how I felt. I don't know what happened. Why did it happen? and I want to know everything. Don't tell my family what you can't tell me. I want to know first, and we'll decide if we'll tell the family. And that's the way we started from there. We started fighting together. I was in the hospital for weeks at a time with my little young baby at home. I treated her, and then she was told she needed a heart transplant. I was on the transplant list for maybe about six weeks and they called me. But my infant son was very, very ill. And I said, no, I have to wait because my family is first because they don't understand. And I want to be around enough so my young son would know his mother like his brothers did. She was on the heart transplant list from the Medical College of Virginia. And then she says, what am I gonna do now? I'm waiting for a heart and I'm getting worse. Well, then I started to uh, look at other options, and that's when I discovered the role of CoQ10 in heart disease. And that was like years ago. And uh, I said, look, Joan, I said, I just learned about this, quote, miracle nutrient that helps people with heart failure. Would you be willing to try it? And she says, absolutely, I'll try it. So I put her on CoQ10, and I started to double the doses and triple the doses. And you know what? She started to get better. She started to breathe better. She was staying out of the hospital. So by the time my name come up on the transplant list again, I was on coenzyme Q10, and it gradually started bringing my heart level up. And then she felt so much better. Guess what? She didn't need a heart transplant. And then when they offered it to her, she refused. I mean, she was almost as good as new. Then eventually I treated her with ribose. I learned about ribose, uh, which actually helps to form ATP, we, we call it adenosine triphosphate, but it breathes energy into the heart cells. And then with a combination of the awesome foursome, coenzyme Q10, carnitine, D-ribose, and magnesium, she started to thrive, and she did better and better. So metabolic cardiology really works. There are loads of people on this earth right now breathing and, and refusing heart transplants and getting on with their lives as a result of metabolic cardiology. I fought for 28 years, and I'm still here because of the relationship I have with my doctor and my family. You know, over the 25 plus years I saw Joan, you know, I got to meet Earl, her husband. Uh, he was a war veteran from Vietnam and, and uh, had a lot of respect for him for protecting us, you know, in the war. And, and then I used to coach midget football. And they brought Warren in. Actually, Warren was the baby Joan had that caused what we call a postpartum cardiomyopathy. And I saw how big he was, the size of Earl. I said, I got to have this kid for my football team. So basically, you know, I coached midget football for six years and I got Earl on the team and I, I sort of became friends with the family. You know, Earl was a patient, Joan was a patient, Warren was on my football team, and, and we all became like a family together. He used to say little things he would tell my husband, take her on a trip. Let her do anything she want to do. Don't plan anything. Everything was spontaneously because I didn't know how much time I had left. You know, this general practitioner relationship where I'm involved with the son, the husband, and, and, and of course, Joan, uh, it's all part of the healing. It's all part of the, the healing relationship. It's really getting to know these people and, and uh, sort of getting into their own living room and understanding their issues and and, and determining what their fears are and, 
and uh, you know what it's like to have this illness. And and for me, it was a blessing just to meet these people. They really helped improve my uh, journey in becoming a physician. He always listened. If I needed another doctor for any other any other reason, he got that doctor for me. And I really think by having the kind of relationship with my doctor, he wasn't just a doctor, he was a friend. He was my mentor in a way. You can do this. Are we gonna try this? I said, if you believe in it, I believe in it. And that's what you have to do. You have to believe in your doctor and your doctor make you believe in yourself. And you just keep trying. You never give up. You never give up. I never given up in all these years. I learned, a, through all this, I learned that don't worry about what you can't control, but control what you can. And that's what my life models have been. And I'm always fighting and telling people, know yourself, know your body, and don't let anyone tell you anything different. My son now is 28 years old, which was the baby. And no one understands why I'm still here. I am here because of the relationship I had with my doctor and willing to try different alternatives to help me get better, whether it was foods or a vitamin supplement, or just say, sit back and don't do anything today. Just kick your feet up and just listen to some music and smile. The basic thing I found of life is a smile. If you find something to smile about. You know, even if you're reading a book. And he always taught me that. He says, keep going, keep going. I'm a fighter because we fight together. And we're still fighting together. 